Good morning. Does the land of the Philistines escape judgment? Well, our reading today is a whole chapter in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 47, verses 1 to 7. Let's go straight to it. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah the prophet against the Philistines before Pharaoh attacked Gaza. Thus says the Lord, Behold, waters rise out of the north and shall be an overflowing flood. They shall overflow the land and all that is in it, the city and those who dwell within. Then the men shall cry and all the inhabitants of the land shall wail at the noise of the stamping hooves of his strong horses, at the rushing of his chariots, at the rumbling of his wheels. The fathers will not look back for their children, lacking courage, because of the day that comes to plunder all of the Philistines, to cut off from Tyre and Zidon every helper who remains. For the Lord shall plunder the Philistines, the remnant of the country of Kaftor. Baldness has come upon Gaza, Ashkelon is cut off with the remnant of her valley. How long will you cut yourself? O you sword of the Lord, how long until you are quiet? Put yourself up into your scabbard, rest and be still. How can it be quiet, seeing the Lord has given it a charge against Ashkelon and against the seashore? There he has appointed it. So that's all of chapter 47. So does the land of the Philistines escape judgment? No, it does not. So like several things, there's different understandings of the timing of this. So there are different understandings of the timing for this invasion of Philistia. But what we do know is that God foretold an invasion of the land of Philistia. And and really, this means the five cities of the Philistines, especially there in what we call today the Gaza Strip. This is a portion along the coast. And there's the coastal highway there. And that was kind of a a bad piece to, to live in that neighborhood. That's where the Philistines were. And what you had there was the coastal road. Every time Egypt wanted to invade to the north and to the east, they had to go through Philistia. Every time Babylon wanted to invade to the south and the west, it had to go down along the coast road and go straight through Philistia. So this was a continuous back and forth between Egypt and Babylon and previous to that, Assyria. You probably remember the Philistines. In the earlier days of Israel, they were the primary opponents of David, and they were their continuous adversary there for God's people at that time, not as much after. But their attitude towards God's people and their many incursions into Israel seem to have been repaid, in part at least, with this invasion into Philistia. I want you to notice that this isn't neutral. God isn't neutral toward all the nations. God is against Philistia. He's against it. It says it right here. This isn't a neutral prophecy. And you know, nations don't need to fight each other. They can live in peace with each other or they can invade each other. Each people sort of decide what they'll put up with in their rulers and what they'll do and what they won't do. And so the nations are not all equal. They're not all the same. One nation isn't, isn't like or equal morally to another nation. And I would certainly be very hesitant to put different, to rank nations morally into different ranks. But I do know that God is the ultimate judge of all these things. But I don't think all the nations are equal. Do you? Really? There's almost no equality in our world. Everything is different. All civilizations are not equal. And you know, there's a couple of places in the Bible where what does God say? God says that he chooses the least of all people. When he chose Israel, he chose the least of all people to be his his people. So even the Philistines, perhaps in some respects, the Philistines might have been superior to the Hebrew people. Any people can advance spiritually or can regress spiritually. And when you are worshiping false gods and fake gods, that's going to bring you down into a bad place. When you're worshiping the true God, that'll bring civilization up into a better place. There are broad influences at work in every cultural situation. What we need to do is look around ourselves and see there's a lot of really negative influences at work in our cultural civilization. May God help us in our situation. Let's pray together. Dear Father in heaven, show us how to give light in a world of darkness. Show us how to draw hearts and souls to Jesus. Help us, Lord, in these things. We want that. We want to be used by you in this way. Thank you for hearing our prayer, Lord, for the world around us. May we draw hearts into your light. Thank you for hearing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May God help us to be a moral asset in our world and not be any kind of wrong moral influence in it. God be with you today.